Wait, should we do introductions? We haven't oh, yeah, even we introduced ourselves to the public. <laughs> Two like strong air signs are just like going right into the like analytics. <laughs> Who do you want to go first? Um, okay, I can go first. Um, my name is Genevieve Ting. I use they them pronouns. Um, I am a queer, non-binary, transmasculine, Asian American writer and artist, originally from the Bay Area, but I've been in LA for the past 10 years. Um, I co-edit a zine called Loves Me, Loves Me Not, which is a yearly Valentine's Day zine featuring work entirely by queer, trans, non-binary, and women artists of color um, with one of my best friends, Nikita Lamba. Um, yeah, I'm also a poet and I also facilitate workshops, one of them being a workshop titled Queer Love is Spacious, which is this workshop that is all about exploring how queerness and non-binariness, as we were just saying, can be maps for understanding like spaciousness with, within our bodies and outside of our bodies. So yeah, that's that's my little log line. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Jennifer Moon. I use they or she pronouns. And how do how do I oh God, I was like thinking before this, I was like, how do I identify myself? Or what is I don't I I just got back from a trip, like a six week trip trip driving across country uh, to upstate New York to teach at Bard MFA and then drove back. And it was very like I learned a lot and I feel like I'm in some kind of like transitional space or something. And like, so like thinking about like, how do I introduce myself and what is it that I, that I do was like kind of challenging, but I guess I could say that I, I make art sometimes, <laughs> which is also something I'm questioning, like what is art and like, in terms of like, you know, like, what is it, what is it doing? Like, you know, and what kind of uh, like, what kind of systems and apparatuses is it entangled with? Um, and like, what is it like, what is it, it are there possible, where are there possibilities for like breachings of, you know, what I would call the 5% universe, which is like our kind of reality that's um, rooted in binaries, hierarchies and capital. And then, you know, sometimes I, and I also teach, I'm a new teacher. I just started teaching, um, uh, at Otis and at Bard MFA like two years ago. And that's been also something that has been changing me a lot. And then I also do workshops and stuff. Um, uh, I I guess, I don't know, I guess I co-facilitate like a process group and I don't know what to call it either. I guess co-facilitate um, the Revolution School um, and very also very interested in love. That's actually one of my questions for you. <laughs> Um, I guess that's, that's my intro. I guess, I mean, my, I kind of just wanted to ask you what love is. <laughs> um, but maybe that's too broad. And then also like, are, do you think you're good at love? Because I think I'm very bad at love. Um, and then also about like, what do you like romance or like the romantic and I'm bringing that up in thinking about like the narratives, like these prescribed kind of um, narratives that are um, that are attached or that part that co-constitute like love. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my three part question. Wow. Yes. I have to say my heart is smiling so much knowing that this is the question that you've proposed because I, if given the chance would rather talk about love than just about anything, <laughs> which is like what you can write on my tombstone as a Libra. <laughs> um, but I think I'll answer the first part of your question, which was like, what is love? Um, I, I really, the reason why I started doing that workshop titled Queer Love is Spacious, which I started doing like during the pandemic or like the heat of the pandemic was because I had started fixating on this quote by um, the Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams, who's like the first black ordained Zen priest. Um, and she has this book called Radical Dharma that's really amazing. Um, and she had this quote, which she had in this interview where she basically said like, love is space. It's like giving people the ability to be as they are, but also to have room to have like higher hopes or ways that they can change as well. Like it's the space for both of those things to exist at the same time. Love is bigness, it's allowance, it's flexibility. And as soon as I saw that quote, like I just marinated in it for months. And like, once I thought about space, like all of these things kept coming to me. And I read Hope in the Dark by Rebecca Solnit. And there was like ideas about hope and love and change that were kind of all morphed together. And I also read Braiding Sweetgrass and like 
I don't know, could we could spend a whole separate <laughs> Pride Publics conversation about just braiding sweetgrass. Um, but yeah, I think love for me is space. Like it is the spaciousness to let people be as they are. And it's also the ability to change. Like I was just journaling the other day that love is letting each other change and love is letting each other transform. And I think that so many times people can kind of fixate on the idea that love is like a static thing. Or once we reach a certain pinnacle of love, like romantic love or like, you know, love that's within a marriage or love that's within like a certain version of societal expectations, like that is then the plateau that love lives on. And I think that we forget that love is like an alive and fluid thing and it changes because we're constantly changing. Like all of our atoms and molecules are moving around and dancing and of course love will change. Um, so yeah, that would be my answer to the first part of your question. What is the second part? <laughs> um, are you good at love? Uh, Meaning like, yeah, like how, how um, yeah, like in your, in your kind of romantic or, I don't know, that's the, the third question. So the intimate kind of, I don't even know what to call it anymore. <laughs> I mean, there's so yeah. many different forms of love. Right. Um, and it feels weird, right? Or it feels in this kind of transitional mode that I am in. And, and we're kind of like questioning these kind of narratives and these kind of words that we use <laughs> to describe love. I guess I'm talking about like, um, like a, what, how, how we would understand like a romantic, intimate, sexual kind of, and sex meaning it could be also like asexual type of, you know, a relationship to absolutely so I really like you sort of breaking down that question and unpacking the different types of love and the different like textures of love and romantic love versus like platonic love or familial love and stuff like that and for me I I really try and practice the idea that there isn't a hierarchy that exists in love like the same amount of care attention and sort of devotion that you would prescribe to one type of loving relationship should then sort of color all of your loving relationships because love, like I was saying before, is so like animated and it is so alive. Um, I would like to believe that I am good at love. And I think saying that has less to do with ego or like success and more to do with the fact that I'm so deeply guided by my heart and I'm so deeply moved by what love can feel like and what love can do to a person. And I really, I really ascribe to like the bell hooks definition of love, which is that you know, love is like the only like revolutionary action we have left. And the true purpose of love is to transform us. And when I think about that, and I look at my life, and the fact that I am a person who has changed, like in my gender, and in my performance, and in myself so many times over and over again, like, I have had this like relentless pursuit of transformation. And that is because I love myself so deeply, and I'm willing to let myself change. And so I think that when I look at my relationships, whether they be friends or community or or lovers or loved ones or partners, like I, I, I look back and I'm like, I've always given so much, like I've always been willing to open up so much. And I've been willing to love so much, no matter what. And yeah, so I, I'd like to believe that I am good at love. And I feel like love is very good to me in return. <laughs> And the third part of the question was romance, right? Yeah. What, yeah. What do you What do you think about romance, or romance, and also notions of romanticizing, maybe? Yeah. Um, as a Libra, this question is delightful and triggering. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I tell my friends all the time, like I am, like just a ceaseless romantic. Like I think that I, especially as a poet, and I'm sure you relate to this too, like. I find the poetry in all things. And so I was just talking to um, <laughs> someone I care about a lot who has a Libra moon. And they were just like, you know, if any given day you give me like one pink cloud and like a beautiful breeze down the street, like, and I'll be fine. Like that the whole day will be fine for me, you know? Um, and I think I'm the same way. Like it takes very little for me to just be like so moved and so drawn into like the romantic sweep of the world. So Romance, I think, is really essential. I think that beauty is sort of a birthright. And in any given day, like, you should be able to find the beauty. Everyone deserves to have beauty in their life. And everyone deserves romance. Like, I don't think it's a frivolous thing. I don't think it's a superficial thing. I think beauty is, like, innate and organic. And it, we need it to survive. And I think a lot about in nature, like, 
you know, beautiful like formations that occur in nature, like spirals or like even like mycelial networks, like between trees, like there's so much beauty in the way that the world stays connected. And when you look at certain structures in nature, you're just like, God, that's so stunning. And it just makes me think about how like romance is integral for us to stay alive, like romance is needed for survival. And at the same time, I think over romanticizing things can be dangerous because you know, you can live with your head in the clouds. But um, there's another part of me that's like, it's really good to have your head in the clouds, you know? Um, when I taught my workshop before Queer Love is Spacious, I, or I talked about this idea with gender, which was like, you know, when I talk about being non-binary, I'm like, oh, things are so spacious. And I see it as like this world opening and it's so like starry eyed and I'm so dreamy and like all this stuff. And some people might respond to me and be like, oh, you're such a starry eyed dreamer with your like head in the clouds and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I thought about it and I was like, somewhere along my ancestral line within my lineage, someone had to be a starry eyed dreamer. And that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Like the reason why I'm alive is because someone in my body's lineage had a romantic notion that they wanted their life to change. And so then that's what happened, you know? So like we are the living embodiment of romance that has lived in the past coming into fruition now. Oh my God. Thank you so much for answering those three questions. I feel, I feel like you just gave me and everyone like so much love right now. And I feel very like, um, like, uh, revitalized or something. Like I I was like afraid that I was kind of losing my faith in love. Um, and also like really questioning notions of romance and romanticizing, but how you talked about it, especially how you described like, like there must have been some somewhere in your lineage, someone had to have romanticized or had a romantic uh, vision to transform, you know, like, so thinking about romance and romanticizing as a transformative, like um, tool or a force is really beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Thank you for asking those questions. I was just, I don't know if you ever get this way as like an Aquarius, but like, I feel like I understand myself better when I'm like talking out loud and like parsing through the ideas. So even as I was answering this, I was like, oh yeah, I do believe that. Like, oh, right. That is what I think. <laughs> yes. So totally. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Wow. That was so amazing. <sighs> yeah. Um, okay. So my question for you is um, very much inspired by the fact that we both picked a quote from Cruising Utopia and Jose Esteban Munoz and I was really stuck on literally as most people are like the first page in that book which is just the big quote about like you know queerness is not yet here put another way queerness is an idea and I've been thinking so much about possibility and like the future and what does it mean to like orient ourselves towards the future and I feel like a lot of your work thinks about the sort of like space beyond the current one we live in whether it's like outside of a binary or outside of an idea or outside of words and hearing you also talk about how like braiding sweetgrass and some of the other texts you've been reading have been sort of filtering through that as well. So my question is quite simple, but I feel like knowing any Aquarius's brain, it will go in many directions. <laughs> um, but what does simple possibility look like for you? Look and feel like for you? Oh, one thing that I'm learning because I'm very heady and, you know, maybe it's Aquarius thing. Maybe it's also a Virgo moon thing. Maybe it's just also a Capricorn thing. I don't know. But I'm super heady in my, um, like, super analytical. It's very comforting to me. Um, so I've been trying to um, get more embodied. And I just took, like, a like a, a somatic class for, through the Resilience Toolkit. And, um, and like, also just got, like, a, a somatic trauma-informed um practitioner, a counselor, not a therapist, which is like a, another thing to talk about, like therapy versus like coaching or practice. But that's like another topic. So I've been um, trying to really um, feel my body. Like, and I've also, I'm also pretty, um, I think, cut off from my body in a lot of ways. Um, so like when you ask the question of like, how does it feel? Um, I started thinking about my trip that I mentioned earlier. Um, and one, one of the things that I was learning or paying attention to was how I felt like in the different places as I traveled through the U S um, and what places um, and environments and landscapes I felt really good in or in, in meaning like feeling kind of like alive or like feeling expansive, feeling um, like 
me, whoever I am, like extending beyond like my physical body and feeling like connected to the environment. Um, and, and, and I think that is like a really simple um, way for me to feel a possibility. Um, and, and I like, yeah, and it's, it has been very like, I was, because I like to complicate things <laughs> and make lots of diagrams and charts. That's, that was like a very simple thing that I was like, I learned in being like, okay, how do I feel in my, in my body? Do I feel like expansive? Do I feel connected? And then through that, I, I definitely feel like possibilities. So that's feeling and then look like. Yeah. Okay. So look like. Hmm. Okay. Now I'm going back to my Leo rising. <laughs> <laughs> Because I always feel like I'm performing all the time and then looking at myself performing. So like all of this that I'm talking about, I'm always like witnessing myself, like doing, <laughs> like feeling and like, um, and like smiling. And so like, definitely like when I'm in the, that space of possibility and feeling expansive and connected, I definitely am smiling a lot. So I look very happy. <laughs> um, and I think also what it looks like is that I am more um, like interested, like I'm, I'm without having to try in other people and the things around me and, and feel like, like genuinely curious. I think, I think curiosity is also like a simple way for me to like, um, of what like pos simple possibility looks like if I, if I'm curious about something or someone or any, an idea. Um, yeah. Can I add one more part of the question? Yes. What does it sound like to you? Oh my goodness. Okay. Sound like, uh, you're really testing my, <laughs> my All the senses. Yeah. <laughs> what does it sound like? Oh, that's a really good one. Let's see. I have to, I have to think about this or feel maybe I'm trying to use feeling words, got to feel into it. Um, gosh, I don't know. I think it sounds like where I'm at, you know, like I feel, yeah. Like when, um, when, when I'm feeling like the expansiveness and the connectedness that I talked, talked about, and I'm feeling curious and it looks like a certain curiosity. I think the sounds, it sounds like, like wherever I'm at, like whatever the, like the people, like I become more sensitive to the sounds around me, like the animals. Um, maybe I, maybe it can also sound like a certain, um, I don't know, like in terms of my body, like a feeling of like, like a heartbeat sort of, but like a longing, like a, like a really like, like an in love kind of heart, heartbeat or something. Mm. I don't know if that's like a sound or a feeling. <laughs> I think it's all of those things. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jennifer. I feel like I feel so, I feel so much love, honestly, in this conversation. And like my favorite feeling also is just like my brain expanding as my heart is expanding. So thank you so much for this. And thank you to the One Archives for letting us do this. Yes, thank you. I feel the same. I, I, I like the things, how you phrase things. I guess it makes sense because you're a writer and you're good with words. But so, so much of throughout our conversation, how you like, yeah, how you um, phrase things or talked about it. I was like, yes, that is exactly how I'm feeling about this. And so, even now, when you're talking about like the brain expanding plus the heart expanding, feeling that. Yay. I'm so honored. Thank you so much for this. Me too. I'm honored too. Thank you.